When I saw the new Model S and X refreshed interiors, I, like many of you, I'm sure, was first taken by the very large 17-inch screen and especially the wildly new steering yoke in the car. But behind the scenes, some really amazing tech has been implemented that deserves a closer look too. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I expected to actually be live streaming the serial number nine attempted launch today, but with the FAA getting their um, whatever's in a bunch, I guess we're gonna have to move on and do some other videos in the meantime. Anyway, in my last video, I talked at length about the new Tesla steering yoke and pretty much geeked out on it. You can see the link above if you haven't watched it yet. And yes, I also ranted a bit about Tesla not valuing full self-driving on trade-in. Turns out I spoke a little bit too soon. Elon Musk has said they are working on solving the problem problem by valuing full self-driving or enhanced navigate on autopilot at trade-in in in the future. So apologies about not having seen that tweet or taking it into account. On the other hand, do remember that this isn't a done deal yet, and we don't know the terms of valuation. Like, it might be just a small fraction of the original cost of the software. So I still say we have a right to be upset, but at least it seems to be moving in the right direction now, so that's good. All right, so on to some other tech premiering in the Model S and X that's worth geeking out about. Number one, as I spoke about last time, is the lack of stalks in the car. Without stalks, how do we put our car in drive or indicate a left turn, for example? Well, it turns out the AI behind Enhanced Navigate on Autopilot, again, often called full self-driving, is behind all of this. According to Elon, when you step on the brake after getting in the car, apparently the new system will sense whether you want to go into drive, in other words, what's before you is clear, or reverse, like something like a sidewalk is blocking the car in front of you. This makes sense, and you can override this selection by interacting with the touchscreen, apparently. What's not as clear to me is how it would sense, say, that you are ready to put the car in drive after backing out of a parking space. Does it sense when you've pulled far enough back that it can drive forward? Or perhaps when you start to turn the wheel the other direction, it senses this and puts it in drive? Whatever system it is, Elon Musk at least says it's far better than manual PRND selectors. I also wonder how it's going to know when you're ready to park. Will it know you're in a parking space or at the place on the street you intend to park? These seem like kind of gotcha situations. Perhaps with the hold feature on, the car just puts itself into park from drive when you open the door. (laughs) Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how this all works. All right, so what about turns? Well, there are force activated buttons on the main steering yoke to activate the signals. But again, Elon Musk says the driving AI is going to sense where you're going and activate the signals for you. Now, of course, this makes complete sense if you're navigating somewhere, as the full self-driving computer will know when you're getting close to a left-hand turn, for instance, and can activate the signal. But I, for one, don't tend to use actual navigation when going to my local grocery store or to work or something. I just get in and drive there, no computer assistance needed. So what happens then? Will the car learn where I'm likely to go and engage the signals at points it expects me to turn? That seems to be the indication. But that also seems to be a place where it could get really annoying. The car keeps attempting to set a turn signal I don't want at a given intersection. I don't know about this one. I guess with the force buttons, it likely will not be a problem in general, but I hope there's a way to disable it if it gets too annoying when driving without autopilot on. It also seems from this implementation that it's likely the turn signal feature is specifically designed around having enhanced navigate on autopilot on in your car. It will work much better if the car is driving rather than the human. Now, of course, it's likely that someone who can afford a Model S or X is more likely to get full self-driving, but of course many won't, and that seems like it could cause problems for those who opt out of this option. I guess we'll have to wait and see. One thing I really hope that Tesla does is to let these new features kind of trickle down to us Model 3 and Y owners. While we have the stocks, of course, we also have the same full self-driving hardware built into our cars, so there's no reason in time why drive shifting couldn't trickle down at least, and potentially turn signaling as well. I, for one, will certainly be game to try these new features if they come to my Model Y, but I might also be very happy to still have my turn and drive stocks. Another fun fact that was buried in the Model S specs is that it can do multiple high acceleration runs, say if you're doing quarter miles on a track. This will come down to thermal management as much as anything, because the old version of the Model S and Model X could not do multiple runs because the batteries would overheat. From what I've seen, it appears that the regular and regular plaid cars will still have the 18650 or 18 by 65 millimeter rather than the Model Y 3's 2170 cells or the new 4680 cells. 
The Plaid Plus, that's not coming out till late this year, should have the new 4680s, which would explain why it has much higher range, but the others will still have the older style battery cells in them. But these cells apparently are going to be housed very differently than the older versions, and must have a much better cooling system than the old models did. The 2012 through 2020 Model SX batteries came in 14 modules connected together, and battery overheating was a significant problem when doing lots of high acceleration runs. The newer pack looks much more streamlined, and apparently the coolant can cool the batteries, or heat them if need be, much more efficiently than the older system. Details are a bit thin on this, but I can't wait to see Sandy Monroe tear down one of these cars to look at how this new cooling system works in practice. Turning to quality of life features, the new 17-inch screen looks amazing, and the rear passenger screen looks like it might be a tad small, but certainly will be nice for rear passengers to watch or interact with. The most amazing part, however, is the power of the apparently dedicated game-playing hardware behind the screen. As opposed to the Model Y and Model 3, the Models S and X screens apparently have their own dedicated hardware that can top out at 10 teraflops. This is around the same performance level as the new PS5, and as the featured game on the photos is The Witcher, which is a very high-spec game, the implication is that the car will be able to play AAA title games, and with at least four and perhaps seven players playing along. It does, after all, say every passenger in the car seat seven. With wireless controls and a great view for at least all of the front-facing passengers, the car looks like it will be a seriously awesome family gaming setup. What a fun thing to do on road trips, right? And as many people have noted, the every seat tagline just adds to the evidence that Tesla really does expect drivers to be doing a whole lot less driving very soon. In a moment, let's discuss sound, but first, if you enjoy this video, please do like it so other people can find it, because that's how YouTube works, and of course, subscribe for more of these. Also, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful and very supportive. I love our Discord conversations and our Patreon stuff, so thank you so much. Also, a big thank you to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. Definitely check him out on YouTube or Instagram. Of course, don't forget that we are Tesla and Amazon affiliates. You can look in the description for more on this. A simple click from you will help out the channel. Thank you so much. And of course, don't forget our new merch store, which has this awesome Tesla bot t-shirt, a tumbler, and a mug. You can get all of that stuff online right now. And of course, any purchases you make will really help out the channel. Thank you. So this brings us to the final bit of tech I got excited about with this refresh, active noise canceling for your car. As a sound designer, I definitely am sensitive to environmental noise. So perhaps this is a bigger deal to me than other people, but I really think this is huge. Cars, of course, are inherently noisy beasts. Internal combustion engine cars have explosions going off less than a meter from your ears. And even with good sound damping, they're very, very loud, even while sitting still. EV cars are, of course, completely quiet when sitting still, but they also get noisy, especially at highway speeds and with other noisy cars around them. The dual pane windows of my Model Y are great and really help reduce outside noise, but it's far from perfect. On a highway, it's still very loud inside the car. This noise is not only annoying, but has been proven to be psychologically bad for us. Simply put, quiet environments are better for our health. So what is active noise canceling? Well, if you have Bose headphones or Apple AirPod Pros or something like that, you've experienced this already. Because sounds are waves, like 3D water waves, they can interfere with each other both constructively and destructively. Noise canceling headphones use mics on the outside of the headphones to hear the sound around you, like the sound of a jet engine near your seat on an airplane. Some clever electronics does fast Fourier transforms on this noise. It has to be really fast to avoid lag that would make the whole process useless. And each frequency band is phase shifted 180 degrees out of phase with the incoming sound. Then the speakers in your headphones amplify this phase shifted sound to the same level and play that back to your ear just as the other sounds arrive from the outside world. If this is done right, and it's really complicated to do right, both sets of sound waves arrive at the same time and destructively interfere with each other, causing you to hear nearly silence. Now, while this technology is complicated in headphones, the whole process must be much more complex in a car. The interior space is far bigger than inside of headphones, of course, and there are many people inside the car, so it's hard to target exactly where the sound waves need to match up. Tesla apparently, however, has got this licked. They use exterior microphones to pick up outside sound and then process the sound as noise-canceling headphones would. Then the car must rebroadcast the sounds from speakers near each passenger in the car, creating a reduced noise environment for each of them. 
Or alternatively, the car could just reduce the general overall noise and broadcast that within the car as a whole. This wouldn't be nearly as effective at getting rid of every sound for each passenger as the individuated version, but it would still be pretty effective and much, much better than simply passive noise reduction. Anyway, this is really exciting sound tech and should make people's drives much calmer. You might not think it's a big deal, but consider how much nicer it is to sit in a quiet forest than next to a guy jackhammering on the sidewalk, and you get the idea. Sound is stressful, and just like the bioweapon defense air filter to get rid of harmful air, this will help get rid of harmful sound, and that will make for a calmer commute with the passengers arriving more rested and less stressed out. So all of these little things in the new Tesla's Model S and X will, I believe, add up to something huge, and people who experience driving or being a passenger in these cars will feel like they're going back to the Stone Ages when they have to drive another car. All right, I hope you found this episode interesting and informative. If you did, definitely like it and subscribe for more of this. And in the meantime, don't forget to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.